Hello everyone and welcome to today's live stream. If you remember uh, on Tuesday, Brad Tallis, he designed a spark plug. And uh, so what I'm gonna be covering today is actually assigning some tool paths. Uh, but prior to that, I need to bring it in. He, he had shared the, pro, uh, the file with me. So I need to bring that in and then uh, get started on some tool paths. Prior to that, I wanted to just uh, touch base. We've got Fusion Academy coming in Portland, Oregon on uh, August uh, 5th, 6th, and 7th. It's going to be a cool event, so if you guys can make it, I uh, highly recommend going to that. Uh, everybody on the live streams will be there and the people behind the scenes like uh, Aaron and Marty and Bryce and everybody on that team as well. So it'll be a cool event for everybody. Definitely make sure you check that out. So uh, like I said, Brad had sent me the file. He emailed it to me. And so I'm going to bring it in the screen here. So he emailed me the file. And then so what I'm going to do, I'm going to click download. And then that's going to end up down in my uh, inbox in my downloads. And so here it is right here. So now I can move this out of the way. And so what I need to do here is go to upload. And I need to select the file. And you can see it right here. And I'm going to click upload. Ah, I forgot to switch over to this screen. Sorry about that. Let me start over. <laughs> okay, so after this, does this all cancel out? Uh, one thing that we sometimes forget to do is to switch the screens. <clears throat> so let me do this. I'm going to delete that. Got a little bit of a delay here. That's the thing with the live streams. You get to see us fumble. <laughs> All right, let me try this again. There we go. It was still uploading when I was trying to delete it. Okay, starting again from a blank slate. Uh, Alright, so Brad, if you remember, he had emailed me the file. So here we go. I'm going to click uh, download file here. And then that ends up going into my downloads. So what I need to do here now is I go to upload. I'm going to select the file. And there's two because I just tried two of them back to back. I'll just do this last one. I'll click upload here. And we'll give it a minute. So this is what you should be seeing. Again, there's uh, dual instances of this because I just tried it uh, prior to sharing my screen. I apologize for that. All right. Okay, so now I can close this here. I'm going to open the drawing so I can view it. Give that a second as it loads. And I'm going to open the model. And that's the actual spark plug. So what I do as a machinist, anytime I'm uh, making a part, I'll review it and just kind of take a look at it, get some ideas. I start thinking about how am I going to hold it, what operation I'm going to do first, uh, what machine I have available. So that always uh, makes a difference with how you're going to approach it. So uh, what I'm going to be doing this machine on is a Haas ST10Y and that's a machine we have at Pier 9 and so uh, already I'm thinking that I can hold it in this orientation so I'll chuck it on this side so that I can machine these features here uh, for the bottle opener uh, because I've got uh, milling capabilities on the lathe so I can do that uh, one would think that you could hold it like this chuck it on this end on the left and then turn all of this and then maybe re-grab it and do something here on this side. But I'm trying to do this in one operation so I can just machine it uh, starting here on this right side. Work, work my way back to the left here. 
and then part it off, and then I'll have a completed part. Um, so that's what I'm thinking, how I would make that. And again, as I'm reviewing the part, I see some something here on the model that doesn't look exactly right. So I'm going to click on that feature. So I see here in the timeline, the thread was created here at the end, and these chamfers, so when I click on that, you can see it highlights it right here. And then uh, this one here. Oh, so those are right back to back, okay. So what I'll do is I'll drag this over here before and give it a second here. And uh, okay, that, now that looks a lot better. That thread looks a lot better. The chamfer was giving some weirdness prior to that. But so, okay, so that looks good there. And I know how I'm gonna hold it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now, I'm just gonna go right into the manufacturing workspace. And usually what I like to do is I close this uh, data panel out so I have more, more real estate on my screen. So we're gonna start here. Always start up here on the left-hand side. We've got this new feature, NC Program. I'm gonna be covering that in a future live stream. For now, I'm just gonna keep it straightforward with the workflow we've been doing in the past. So I'm gonna create a setup. And then over here, we've got our setup and operation type. I'm gonna do turning or mill turn, so that's what I'm gonna be doing here. And then you can see, right when I did that, Fusion was smart enough to know that it's turning, so it, it made the stock round, and it centered it, if I look here, in this orientation, it centered the stock right on the part. So Fusion is very intelligent, very smart. It does some of the legwork and th thinking for you. And it snapped over to this side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip the Z because I want the front of my part over here in this orientation. So I'm just going to go down here and uh, Take a look here where I want my uh, origin, my WCS. This is where you set your G54. You can do stock front, you can do model front, and you'll notice that the point there moves to the front of the stock. I'm just going to keep it for today's demo just on the stock front. And also, I wanted to verify what units I'm in. So I'm in inches. Our machine here is set up for inches, so I'll be doing everything in inches. Um, in future live streams, we'll definitely be covering metric. Safe Z. So Safe Z is where the tool retracts uh, your turning tools, retract uh, uh, to the front of the part uh, at every operation. And we've got some controls in there that we can touch on as we get into the different operations. And I'll just select a nice round number, something like half an inch. Always when you're doing a setup, you want to verify that the body that you're machining is selected, and Fusion did pick that automatically, but if you have an assembly with multiple parts, you wanna go ahead and make sure that that is correct. Another thing to look at here is spun profile, because we've got a hex here, and we've got this uh, notch here, this cutout for the bottle opener. So we wanna do spun profile so that Fusion will spin that around in a cylindrical fashion, much like when you uh, create a contour and you revolve it in the modeling workspace. And the chuck reference, I'll just put something here, a round number to minus half an inch. Next tab, I'm going to set up my stock. And I'm using a fixed size cylinder. All depends on what stock you have in the shop. And I'm going to be using inch and three quarter stock, so 1.75. The length, I just need to go larger than my part. And I'm going to set the position offset from the front. So you'll notice if I set this view here, and if I go to the center, now the stock is centered. The, the length, that four inch length, is now centered on this uh, solid model. And I'm just gonna go offset from the front, and I'm gonna offset a hundred thousandths. So now we've got a hundred thousandths of material here on the face of the part. You could also set this to round up to nearest values if, uh, if you want. But for this demonstration, half an inch is fine. And down here, it gives me the size of stock that I have uh, that I'm going to be using in this, opera, in, this, uh, in this demo. So next post process here is where you set your program number. I'm going to select uh, just number one. 
you can put whatever number you want and I'll put here spark plug and then WCS offset zero would give you a G54 one would also give you G54 two would be G55 three would be G56 and so on let's leave that at a zero and I'm gonna hit okay so now we've got our stock set up properly we've got our WCS and now we can start assigning some toolpath so if you look up here in the top we've got our milling 2d toolpath we've got 3d milling toolpath drilling multi-axis and we come here to turning so very first thing I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna come down here to turning face and much like the milling toolpath it's all the same uh, I'll always start here with the tools and then the second tab is geometry and then the radii or heights and then the passes tab and then the linking tab and we'll touch on all of these so the first thing I need to do is select a tool and I'm gonna come down here I have already the Pier 9 tool library that we have on the machine so I've got all these tools at my disposal so what I'm going to do, I need to come in here and select what tool I'm going to use. And I'm going to use tool 11. And with this tool, I can face it and turn the OD. So you can see right away when I selected that tool, Fusion automatically and already calculated a tool path. I'm not going to worry about the geometry because Fusion already knows when you're facing, you're facing the front of the part. And you can change it if you desire to in, in this area here. I'm not going to worry about any offset radii. You can do uh, something like this. So uh, inner radius is going to the stock ID. I usually start when I'm turning. I usually start, if you imagine a lathe in this orientation. So I start here. This is where the tool is going to. It's going to the stock ID. And then here I can say pass that by 20 thousandths. It's starting the cut here at the outer radius. And it's starting to feed at this value here. So let's bring that down closer, 0.1. And then the retract is a little bit higher. I'm just going to put that 0. So it's all the same. So the, the clearance and the retract is the same. Next over here, on the Passes tab, you can assign multiple passes. And I can say, give me uh, 60,000 passes with one finishing pass at, uh, let's say, 0.005. And you'll notice that turned red there. It was looking like this here. It was an N because I had deleted the IN. I'm going to touch on that a little bit later, but in the background, Fusion is doing everything in metric. So if I put an IN here, it's assigning inch units. All right, so, and it didn't like just the N. <laughs> it was freaking out on that. So if I just do an N, it didn't like that. So let's go back to the I N. All right, finishing feed rate. You have the ability on the finishing pass to change the feed rate. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And then on linking, you can do things like minimum retraction. Full, you see the tooltip when you hover your mouse over. Full retraction. I'll just leave it at that for now. And you remember in the setup, we had a thing where we set up the safe Z. So the safe Z is right here. That's a half an inch away from the front. That's what I had set. And it starts at this approach at the safe Z and it ends at this. So if I say last tool path, you'll see the green. So now it'll come in here, it'll face and the tool will end here. And the reason why you would want to do this, say if I uh, came right after this facing tool path, and I wanted to start roughing, which I am going to. The way it was before, if it was safe Z, it would face, come in here, face that, and then retract all the way back half an inch. And then the next tool path, it would re, uh, resume cutting from here, the front. So to minimize all of that back and forth Z motion, you can control it here. And you'll see this evident in the next tool path. And I'm just going to hit OK, see what we get. All right, so you can see we got a material cleared in the front and we 
did a finishing of five thousandths. That looks good to me. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to come in here and we're going to now start turning the outside of this. So I'm going to go turning profile. Fusion remembers the last tool we used, so that's tool 11 in our case here. Some things to pay attention here. Uh, grooving. So if you look at this tool tip here, the tool, when it says don't allow grooving, it will just span across and, and it'll just turn in one direction. It won't dive down into the cavities or the grooves. So I'm going to leave this at don't allow grooving. You can enter your speeds and feeds here. I was fortunate enough on my tool library set where I have everything in there. Uh, but my machine maximum is 3000 RPM maximum that I can go on this machine. In the geometry tab, what I can do here now, I can constrain where it's going. So by default, it's starting at the stock front, which is here, and it's going to the model back. So if I turn that, and if I machine all the way that, let's, let's actually leave that how it is, and then you'll get a better view of what that's going to look like. I'm going to go here to radii. I'm just going to leave it to default for now. Passes. So let's do roughing passes. Let's uh, set maximum roughing at uh, 60 thousandths. And I'm going to do two finish passes at 5 thousandths. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I'm not going to finish with this tool. So let's take that out. I'm going to do a stock to leave of 4 thousandths is good, radially 4 and axially in four is 4. Next thing we're going to come over here to linking and I'm going to leave it at the defaults because I'm satisfied with what that looks like. So if I hit OK, you can see we get a nice tool path. And that looks pretty good, but if I start machining out here and milling right there, so if I leave it how it is right there and my part is sticking out, actually I've got that spark plug right here. So when I was designing this, I actually went down to the auto parts store and bought the spark plug and I took my calipers and I measured each feature and that's how Brad was uh, able to come up with all those dimensions. So here's this actual tree spark plug. So if we're looking at it and it's in the machine and we're turning it and we're turning it this way. Actually, I got that set backwards. So if we're chucking on this side here and we're turning here and this is all thin over here, if we leave that thin and then when we're milling out here, I'm afraid we're going to get chatter. We got to cut the thread. So we've got some features to cut here first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the stock solid all the way to here is where my hand is so that it's nice and rigid when we're machining. And then after I finish everything in this area, in this segment, then I'm going to machine a little bit more and then a little bit more and we'll part it off. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go back in here. In this profile operation, I'm going to edit that. And under geometry, on this back constraint here, I'm going to do by selection. And I could zoom in here. Um, let's go to here because I'm thinking, I'm looking ahead and I need to machine these flats for the hex. I need to do all this threading and all of that. So if this is solid up to here, I'll be pretty good. Alright, so now let's hit OK. Alright, so now we remove that material there. I like the way that looks. That looks a lot better. So now we roughed it. Now I need to finish this. There's a few ways I can go about it. I can just come in here and do profile and start all over. But another thing I like to do is I just uh, come into the one that I just did and I can right click and hit duplicate. Or I can hit control D or command D on a Mac. I'm obviously on a Mac here. So I'll hit duplicate. And what that did, it basically copy and pasted a brand new operation using everything the same that it did in the prior operation. So I need to just go in here and edit a few things. I need to select a different tool. I'm going to go here to my uh, Haas lathe library. And I remember it's this tool here, the 35 degree finishing tool. I'm going to select that. 
And then another thing I need to do here is verify rest machining is turned on. So what Fusion is going to do, it's going to look at all the material that was removed previously and uh, not cut air, basically. So if this was off, it would cut air, but we don't want to waste time. So make sure that's turned on. Radii, I'm just going to leave that all the same. Passes, I can leave that the same. But this time, because I do want to leave, I, want, I do want to rough. Uh, I'm going to take stock to leave off because I'm going to finish. And then I'm going to go here to finish pass. And let's do two passes at five thousandths. And again, like I said earlier, you can change the feed rate. I'm going to leave that how it is and hit OK. And we can see we finished the part, but it's not cleaning up in these grooves there, in the grooves here. And that's because over here, if you come into and right click and edit the operation, if you remember previously in the grooving option here, I said don't allow grooving. I do in this case want to allow radial grooving. I don't want axial grooving because it would uh, dive into the front here where you're cutting out the uh, bottle opener part. So I'm just going to do radial grooving and hit OK. And you can see now what Fusion did, it took the material that was there, roughed it, and did a few finished passes. Same thing here, same thing here. And we're not cleaning up in this area. I'm going to check in my tool library to see what I have on hand. I know this, uh, that sometimes you're in a situation where you need to make a part really quickly and iterate right there on the spot. And sometimes you don't have the luxury to go buy another tool. So I'm going to see what I have in my uh, tool library and see if I can come in and clean that, those corners up. All right, so we turn the outside. This is all finished up to here. And then now, uh, let me see what I have in my tool library. What can, so I'm in the same one here on my Haas lathe. What do I have that I can clean up those grooves? So I've got this grooving tool. Let me edit that and see what size that is. Let me bring that in here. Oh, that's really wide, 375. Let me see something here. Let me close out there. Let me inspect. Actually, I can just go into here. Do we have that groove width dimension? Yeah. Okay, so we got this groove here is 90, 125, 125. Okay, so let's come back here and go back to our tool library. Let's see what tool I have can fit in there. So I know I have this tool, but that's a parting tool. It doesn't really groove very very well if I wanted to clean that up to surface finish. Okay, I'll come back to that. Let's let's uh, carry on. So now we've, we've uh, turned this outside here and I'm looking at this part thinking of what features I want to do. Let's thread that. Uh, or, you know what? Let's machine this flat. Right there. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that here in Fusion, if you're familiar with the milling package, uh, you can just come in here under 2D. And I'm going to do just a 2D contour. I'm going to select my tool. I'm going to go here to my hose lathe, see what I have. So I've got a quarter inch axial. That won't work. I need a quarter inch radial tool to come in and be able to basically face that edge. So I'm going to hit OK here. Next tab I need to do is verify the tool orientation. So I'm going to click this tool orientation. Fusion's asking right now, see this is highlighted in blue. I need to just click a face. And you can see now the orientation is Z up right here. I could have even selected the uh, origin, clicked on one of these faces here. Could have done that as well. And then the contour, I'm going to just hold Alt on my keyboard or Option on my Mac. And what that does, it puts you into single chain selection. And that looks good right there. A couple of things I can do here. Uh, let's see here. I can play with uh, my heights. So the bottom height is the selected contour. The top height, I could I could just come into here. So I could do a selection. 
And I know this is all turned already up to here. So if I view from the left side here, I didn't quite select the right spot, but let's go here and let me select that. There it goes. So now the tool will start here at this blue line and come down to this face when it does all the step down calculations. And that's handled here on the next page, on the next tab, I should say. All right, so here in our passes tab, we've got some things to look at here. Uh, multiple finishing. Yes, I want a couple finishing passes. I want two passes. Let's do two passes of 5,000. That's going to be on the wall, on this wall here. And then what I also need to do is come down here to uh, roughing. And I'll do, uh, let's do, uh, we can actually just come into here, watch this, edit expression. And the maximum step over, we've already got a formula in there that's default from Fusion. And I can say I want it to be 75%. Uh, this formula here, what it does, it takes takes into account if you've got a bull nose, radi a bull nose tool, and it takes into account the, uh, the radiuses. And so you're just uh, counting on the flat of the face of that bull nose. So that's what number is going to give us right here. And let's do, let's remove that in a couple of passes here. Let's do three. And I'm not going to do any stock to leave, and we'll hit OK. So you can see it's starting over here, coming in. I'm going to clean up some of those leads, and I'm going to come into here like this. I don't want a 90 degree arc, I just want it to come in straight. I also want to just make that vertical lead in. If I hover my mouse over here, you got a vertical lead right there. I'm going to take that one out. And uh, that looks pretty good right there. Let me make that a little bit bigger. So let's go 0.250. And then on my heights, let's uh, remove some of this. I'm going to disable that. And stock top, I'm just going to go 0.1 and then make this guy 0 here. And hit OK. Let's see what that looks like. That looks better, but I'm plunging here on the stock, so let me extend that a little bit. So let me right-click this. I'm going to edit the operation. So there's a couple ways I can do that. I can do that in here. And what I'll do, I'll just put uh, 150 thousandths and hit OK. So what that did, that extended it here. There's some other features we can, we can look at, but I'm going to keep it simple like that for now. All right, so that looks good though. That machine's that flat. So now what we want to do, we need to machine the flat on this side. So we can come in here, we can select it over and do it all over again. But one thing I want to show you what we can do, we can right click here under 2D contour. And here we can say, add to a new pattern. And what I'm gonna do here is add that operation to a circular pattern Fusion's asking now what axis. So I'm going to select this face. And what angle am I going around and how many instances? So I can, if there's three or four, I would just check that right here. So I'm going to keep it simple and just do the two spots right there. So just like that, uh, quite cool. Fusion will now flip the part over and mill that side. We can also use that same technique out here when we machine the flats. So while we have this tool uh, active, let's go ahead and, and machine that. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to hit face. And Fusion remembers the last tool. Under, oh, check this out. So I need to select a tool orientation. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Fusion needs to know what face. And under stock selection, I'm just going to I just want to focus on this area here. And over here, uh, as I said earlier, I start at the bottom and work my way up. So if you're looking at it this way, I start here. Where is the tool going to? And where is it going up? And where is it starting at? So right now we have model top. I'm going to do selection. And I'm going to now click on this face. So now there's the reference there to that face and stock top. 
So this material is already removed. I could do this uh, selection and click on that. So again, when I look at it here from the side, Fusion is going to look at this. It's going to bring the tool to this blue line, the baby blue line, and come down to the navy colored line. And I'm going to just leave all these as default and see what we get. That looks pretty good there. Let's see here now. Let me. Now we need to take this guy. Ah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drag this guy up here because it put it into that pattern. And I'm going to now right click here. I'm going to add that to a new pattern. And again, like we did before, we need to do a circular pattern. And we select the axis. And how many instances? I'm going to do six because it's uh, wrench flats. And there we go. So Fusion automatically did that. So let's take a look and see where we're at right now and what's been done and what we still need to cut. So I'm going to go to my setup and I'm going to go here to simulate. I like to view it in the orientation it's going to be on the machine. I always set here, uh, I always go to tail just to show the last bit of the tool path like a tail following the tool. And I have my mode set to standard, colorization I have set to material and material is plastic vinyl. I'm going to hit play here. Just to see where we're at here. Let's speed that up a bit. So it's nice and rigid. We still got all this stock over here. And we've got this little collision here. I need to address that with my leads. My linking, actually. All right, so that's what it looks like so far. It looks good, but I see this red collision here. So that's on Operation Profile 1, 2. Let's take a look at that really quick. Uh, is it this guy? Yeah, it's this one right here. I'm going to go to edit, and I think what that is, it's, uh, we need to, so when I did this constraint over here, and we told it to go back, it's going to the same spot. So let's give that an offset of, uh, let's go 30 thousandths. And that should take care of that. So next, uh, what I need to do here, so I got the flat, I can do the bottle opener side. I haven't threaded it yet, and I can do that after I do all the milling here. So let's keep it uh, milling here, get all this stuff done on the front, and then we'll work our way back to these threads. So we'll go here to 2D contour, and now what I need to do, I need to machine this bottle opener part here. I'm gonna machine all of this and I got the tool is correct and I need to set my tool orientation fusion needs to know what uh, what the orientation is what the Z is I'm gonna hit this face and you can see our Z is now pointing up we need to tell it contour selection uh, so I can come into here fusion wants to give me that but I don't want to do all of that and I do need to hit this feature here so let me cancel that out I can come into here and I'll hold option and what that does it gets you in a single chain selection I can click that again and verify that this is set to open contour there's closed or open so I want to open and what I want to do I just want to guide this tool around here but Fusion, when it comes to something like this, and if you're looking at it from the top view, it's going to be wrapping or basically colliding with itself because it's going to go there and then back to that, that point there. So I don't like the way that looks. I'm going to show you something. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to 
cancel out of this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a sketch that I can drive that contour on. So I'm going to go here to the design workspace. This is what I love about Fusion. You can quickly go back to your design and add a sketch. So I'm going to go here to create a sketch. I'll just do it on this face. And what I'm going to do is here, create. I can go to project. I could have also hit letter P. That's a shortcut. So project. And I'm just going to select the things that I want projected to that. Remember I created a sketch on this surface. So I can come over here, click that, and this. And so what Fusion is doing now is projecting this up to that plane. And then I'll later be able to select this for my contour. So we'll hit OK. And look at that. There's my contour. I'm going to use that to drive my end mill. So we'll come out back over here to manufacture. And let's do 2D contour. Again, it remembers our tool. I need to go here, set my tool orientation to this face. Z is up now. Now if I go here to contour selection, I'll click on that. I'll click it again. And then I'll hover over to here. See how it's all blue now? Now I will hit the green plus. Always make sure you hit the screen plus. Sometimes people forget and then they go in here and you lose. You don't select it. So this will cancel the contour. This will delete it. I'm going to make sure I hit accept. So now we're going to come over here. I'm going to go to mill down to this area here. So let me go to my left view. So I'll be milling down to this. I'm going to pass that by 30 thousandths. And then the top height, let's go to a selection. And I'm going to go, because I know I've milled, I've already turned all of this. I'm going to have to zoom in here so I can get that face. Did I grab that? Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to start milling there. Actually, I already machined that face, so I'm going to change that edge to, to right here to this, this face there. So now it's just going to be milling from here down to here. And on the Passes tab, uh, let's see here, what do I need to change? I'll do multiple finish passes. I'll do two. I'll do at five thousandths. I need to do multiple depths. And I'll say the maximum is, uh, you can assign a value, like 0.1. Some things I like to do is I like to right click and edit. And you can give it an expression. So I can do something like this, tool underscore diameter times 0.5. So 50% of the tool diameter will be the maximum roughing step down. And I'm going to drag this down a little bit here. I can check finish only at final, so it's going to finish the wall only when it gets to the bottom. And then use even step down, so it does those passes evenly. And let's see what we have here for linking. I will give that a bigger value here. Actually, I'll leave that there, that's good. And I'm not going to worry about any angular sweep. Let's call that zero. I do need to come into here and give it a tangent, tangential extension. And let's hit OK, see what we get. Ah, look at that. It's cutting on the wrong side. So let's come into here and we'll right click and we'll edit. And what happened there? So one thing I forgot to do is click on this arrow. When you click on that arrow, I didn't I showed you in my previous live stream that if you click on it, it flips to what side of the contour is it cutting on? So this is the direction it's cutting. So now let's hit OK. That looks better. All right, so it's looking pretty good. Uh, you'll see these red uh, notifications here. That is because when I went back into the design workspace, it, I made some changes. 
and Fusion is saying, hey, something changed, you need to go back and regenerate. And I'll just go back through here and regenerate once we get a little further into the program. So next thing we need to do here is we're going to cut these threads. So let's see what size thread that is. If I look at the drawing here that Brad sent me, M14 by 1.25. So what I have is my trusty Machinery's Handbook, uh, 26th edition. I can go here to Threads, and then it brings this in here. It's on my other screen. Let me drag it in. So now I have this, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to search for Spark Plug, because I know Spark Plugs have, uh, have designation here in this book. And here we go. All right, so this is the thread I'm doing, M14 by 1.25. And what I'm looking at, oh, that's uh, the wrong one. That's for a tap. I need this one here right above it. So M14 by 1.25. The major diameter in inch is 546. Uh, here's the pitch diameter. Here's the minor diameter, 4858. So I need to take those, I, I need those numbers for fusion. So it's, again, I look here, 546 is the major, 4858 is the minor. So let me drag that out of the way here. Come back into here. And what I'm going to do, I'll just put a comment in here. So the major diameter is, if you remember, it was 0 0.546. And then the minor, minor diameter is the 4858. OK, so now I'll post that. So now I've got that here in my notes. And the reason why I did that is when I'm in turning, I need to tell it the depth. And we'll, we'll get to that one second. So I'll go here to turning, thread. What tool am I going to use? And I'll go here to my lathe tool library. And it's going to be this tool. Tool 7, external threading. I'll hit OK. I will look here. Constant surface speed or constant RPM. So if you do this, it will give you constant surface speed. Uh, on turning on certain machines, I like to do constant RPM because then you're not getting that uh, wind up, wind down as the uh, tool changes in the X direction and you have to uh, wait. It, there's a little bit of a dwell uh, while the machine winds up and winds down and you can really hear it at the machine. We can show that when we're at the pier. So I'm just going to do <coughs> uh, constant RPM at 2000. Under geometry, what face am I cutting? So I'm just going to select this face right there you can see it highlighted in blue under confinement on the front let's start a hundred thousandths off the front <clears throat> and on the back let's do another hundred thousand so let me rotate this here and see where we're at all right so that looks pretty good there radii we'll start from stock od i could start from model od so it's a little bit closer and not offset 400, I can do something like 0.1. Passes. Okay, so here is what I was talking about. What Fusion needs to know the thread depth. You see that D value there? Fusion needs to know that. So I don't know that right now, but with the major diameter and the minor, I can do a calculation. And I'm just going to let Fusion do that for me. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to right click, and I'm just going to give it an expression. So I can do something like this, uh, 0 0.546 minus 0.4858, and then close that off, and then say divided by 2, and hit OK. And 0 0.0011, that doesn't look quite right. And the reason why, under this expression, I need to tell it, Go in here. I clicked in the wrong spot. 
I need to tell it I N because fusion is calculating a metric behind the scenes. So now if I do that, we hit OK, and that's the value I want. It's basically this number 546 minus the 4858 divided by 2. That number is 0 0.0301. Number of step downs, I'm not going to get into too much detail on that. In order to save some time, I can see we're running out of time. But let's keep going here. And then the thread pitch. What is that thread pitch? So it's 1.25. Uh, so let's say, where's my, where's my calculator? I could do an expression. I can just do it here. Uh, one point, just to show you another way how to get there, divided by 25.4 equals 0 0.0492. So my thread pitch is 0 0.0492. If I I could have done it there, but I just did it with the calculator to show you there's more, more than one way to get the answer. And you can uh, do a spring pass, use cycle. We'll get to that later on when we're posting and creating code. And on the linking, I'll just do minimum retraction. And when it's done, where do you want the tool to retract to? I'll leave it all default, and I'll hit OK. So there's my threading. <clears throat> so it looks pretty good. I got everything machined thus far up to this point. So what I need to do next is now machine the rest of the part all the way here. And I already, if you remember, I already machined it using these parameters with these step over uh, and the stock to leave and then I finished it with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy, copy those two. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to hit copy. Let's do it one at a time, and I'll paste it, and I'll come into here. And what I'm going to do is I will edit the front and the back. So when we first did it, we started here in the front, and we ended here in the back. So what I need to do now is do by selection, and I'm going to start it here. And on the back, I'm going to go... Should I go all the way to the end or leave it rigid? I'll go up to this point, and I'm going to come off of that uh, minus, let's do 30 thousandths. So now I'm just going to be focusing on removing material from here to there. And everything is the same, but one thing I do want to do, I do want to allow grooving, and I'm going to hit OK. So you can see now Fusion is removing all of this material couple ways I can do the finishing toolpath. I could take this one that I did up here, or I can just take this guy, duplicate it, and change the tool. So I'll go here. I will duplicate this, because it has all the uh, geometry in there. And all I need to do, oops, I clicked on the wrong one. Let's edit this, and make sure that I have this 35 degree finishing right-handed tool. Verify rest machining is on. And I don't want to hit to where it was before, so let's make that zero. And finish pass, let's do two at five. And okay. And I see as I clicked, I forgot to uh, turn off stock to leave. There we go. So it removed, uh, roughed out that material and finished it. And then now we need to come here to the end. And again, I'm just going to take this tool. I'll duplicate that. And all we need to do is change where it starts and where it ends. So the start will be here. And then the ending point will be there. And let's give that a minus 0.150. And we don't want it to cut all the way off. So I need to tell it go to a selection. And I'm going to rotate this guy around here like this. And we just want to cut to that diameter right there, to the inner diameter. 
and everything else should be the same. And I ended up copying the wrong tool. So let's do this one. Let's leave this one as the finishing. Actually, let's, let's back up one second here. So I ended up copying uh, the wrong one. Let's go here, simple fix, come into here. Actually, so that's that, that's that. Uh, was it this one? So I made a mistake right there. So these are duplicates. I'm going to get rid of that. Now, aha, uh -huh, this is where I went wrong. So edit this guy. And let's take this view here. And again, we're going to make it match to here. And this edge right here. There, so we rough that. And this one, it's going back a little further. So let me change that. This is the beauty of doing things live because we actually go through this stuff too. And as you go, you realize you forgot something or missed something. So this is actually good for you guys to see. There we go. And that's more like it. Okay, so I roughed that and then cleared out this material. So we're getting a lot closer here to the end now. We want to just now clean up this material here. And I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it. And there it is. And all I need to do is change where it starts and where it ends. So I want to go out to here. And it's going to be starting right here. Everything else should be the same except uh, the radii. I don't want to go to the stock ID. I want to go to the selection like I did earlier and rotate that around. I just want to go to here. So I want to leave some material here. I'm going to part that off. And OK. All right, so that looks better. And then this guy, I can copy paste or I can just uh, go here and I'll duplicate it. It puts it right underneath, so I'm going to drag it. And here, what I need to do is edit where it's starting and where it's stopping. So it's going to, again, like I did it there, and then this guy is going to start here. That's actually fine. Uh, rest machining from previous. And then the radii, I don't want to... Actually, yeah, that's good right there. And OK. So now we've got the thread, we've got the profile, rough that, we're going to finish there, rough that, and finish that. So I don't like the way that is because when I come in and part, so I need to get that material out of there. So what I need to do here is make sure this goes back a little bit further. So I'm going to look at it from the front, and I need more material here because my part off tool is about an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to do minus point, uh, 0.150, and I'll hit OK there. And then this one, I will do the same thing, and uh, this will be minus point, uh, 0.140. There we go. So now we've got some clearance from our, for our part off tool to come in. Now how we do that, we just come in here, turning, part, Select our tool, and we're going to come in here, and we're going to do our parting tool, tool number nine, and hit OK. We'll verify our geometry is at the model back. By default, Fusion does that. Some cool features. You can do an edge break if you like. So you can tell it if it's a chamfer or a radius, and it'll automatically do an edge break for you. I'm not going to worry about that now. Radii, you can control where it's starting, so it'll start here at the outer and it's going to feed down. Uh, we could come here to model OD right here, because that material is clear, so it'll start here and then feed in and part it off. And distance to cut below, uh, let's go down a little bit, ten thousandths, 
and I'm not going to worry about pecking but you can peck if you like and you can leave stock I do have a parts catcher on this machine so if I come here to use part catcher I turn that on and it'll automatically when you post the code uh, the parts pack the parts catcher will come up so let's hit OK distance cannot be negative you see how that's a red so I'll just hit 0.01 because it already knows how much it's going down so I don't need to tell it the negative value so hit OK and there we go so remember earlier I was talking about these uh, uh, Z, the Z where it's retracting to, we've got this over here. Uh, so let me generate everything. And some operations are already generated. So Fusion is asking, do I want to generate everything or just the ones that need generation? So I'm going to hit no to save time. So now we've got everything done. I'm going to, let's go, whoops. Uh, right click there and hit simulate we will now simulate the whole thing uh, I forgot to turn off that sketch so I can do that here and we'll go a little bit faster let that run through And there, everything is good there. Fusion doesn't do a simulation of the threads. Just keep that in mind. So that looks pretty good. So my part is basically done here. And then now what we would do... Uh, you know what? As I'm seeing... Did I forget some chamfers here? I did. I forgot to hit those. The beauty of Fusion, you can come in anytime and add some cut so I forgot to machine this face I forgot to do that chamfer and I forgot to do that chamfer there so let me close this comments over here and we're just at the top of the hour let me quickly do this so I'll do a 2d contour and this the tool is a uh, tool six yeah that's correct and I'm gonna come in here under tool orientation and select uh, what am I normal to so going to be that so I'll select this plane right there so it's normal to that plane and then geometry it's going to be I'm going to hold option or alt on my keyboard on Windows it's alt on Mac it's option so I want that contour and I want this contour there and then on the Heights, I want to go to a selection and I want the tool to. Am I able to select that? I want to just go down to that point and then I will start from up here. And I just want to do that in one pass. I could remove those, remove the radius. this make that zero and let's give it a little extension here uh, 0.150 and hit hit OK and what else do I need to do now so I've got that one done now I need to hit these chamfers on the bottom I will just take that and I'll duplicate it and I will edit that so the plane is the same but check this out I can just flip the Z so it's now the other orientation. I'm going to delete those chains and just come into. So I need this guy. Again, I'll hit Option and I'll get that contour. And again, Option and that contour. I'll verify that it's on the right side. And the point it was going to on the heights was remember, I picked that center point. And it's going to that, that's fine. And we'll hit OK. And it's machining those edges. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this guy 
I'll put that up here and we'll move this guy also here so there's that that and that I will regenerate the ones that got dirty I'll hit no over here and then now the parts done I need to post process and I already have my Haas post set and I'm gonna hit OK cancel that out let me make sure I got the right setup yet yeah, my setup is proper here and post uh, my information is correct here and I don't know why that is not not working on me right now strange I was just doing this before let me verify let me regenerate everything and I'll hit no let me do a simulation quickly before the top of the hour and that looks good so that looks pretty good there I am going to talk to Brad to see if we can change some things because I don't have the right tool but there you have it so sorry I went a little bit over uh, I'm going to post that out and uh, actually I don't need to post because I need to re, re, uh, reprogram and make some changes to the, the design because of uh, the tools that I had on the machine. I didn't have the right tool for that. So we want to show some collaboration here. Again, like I said earlier, um, we have this four-part series. We'll be doing collaboration on Tuesday, 12 noon Pacific. And then on Thursday, we'll be machining this live at Pier 9. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, Fusion Academy, don't forget about that in Portland, Oregon, August 5th, 6th, and 7th. And I uh, hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, we'll be continuing to do these. And uh, if you have any ideas, let us know. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.